Baby don't, baby don't, baby don't stop. Baby don't, baby don't, baby don't stop. Been a while. Hey, baby. Yeah. I let my hair down. For and I've been a missing you much. Can you ring my bell? Yeah. <laughs> Guess it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. Hello to Rapunzel Hello to you, I'm ringing off your bell I'ma climb up through the window then still Let down your hair, I come for the Knock, knock, hi there Rapunzel Hi, this is Maria Thompson with Twist and Curves I'm here in New York and we're shooting with the beautiful, elegant goddess, Empress Asha Mandela. She's in the Guinness Book of World Records holding the longest locks. I've just finished styling her hair, and we're gonna talk to her about why she has her hair so long, what inspired her, how does she take care of her hair, and a lot of questions that a lot of you have been asking. So Asha, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful and blessed, thank you. Now you know, Everybody out there wants to know now, as you can see, I have no hair. So you know the question is, why in the world would anyone want to grow their hair as long as you've grown yours? That's a question I've never really been able to answer because I didn't plan to grow my locks this long. I just started growing my locks and as time went by it grew and it ended up being this long, but it was not planned. Wasn't planned, huh? So do you style your hair? Do you do anything with it? For 21 years, my locks was considered homegrown. I never styled it. Actually, you were the first person that had the pleasure of styling it for me. And what a pleasure that was. <laughs> it, def it definitely was a pleasure to um, style your hair. So you said you've been growing your hair again for how long? I've been growing my locks for 21 years. 21 years. Now, you know a lot of people want to ask questions like, do you get headaches with it? How do you carry your locks? So let's start with, you know, do you uh, experience any headaches with your hair? Actually, no. My locks, I guess people mix it up with having braids. Like, you don't have any hair. You go to the hairdresser, you get braids. Obviously, right, it's right. a whole lot. I've been growing mine for 21 years, so it grew on me. I don't have any headaches, any, any really negative side effects from it at all. Okay, so back pain? No, none at all. No back pain? No. Okay. Well, that's pretty good because, you know, I posted you on Facebook, so you know the other... I, I happen to... Um, show the one of you washing your hair on YouTube. So do you want to tell everybody how many bottles of shampoo you use when washing your hair? Depending on the size, it takes about three to five bottles of shampoo to wash my hair. Wow. Because it, it, I have to work it in a lot mm -hmm. because it's, sometimes the shampoo is like really thick. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit more. If the bottle is too small, I have to get a lot more because I need to lather it to get it clean. Okay. Now, as far as drying your hair, how do you go about doing that? Drying my hair is a little bit difficult. It's, it's, that's the stress about it, really. It takes probably about 12 or 24 hours, depending. Okay. Um, for the first hour, it's a little bit easier because I use a huge bath towel mm -hmm. to absorb the water. That takes about half an hour to an hour. And after that, since I lay, live in Florida, I just lay it out on a sheet okay. and kind of like to air dry. Like so it's basking in the sun. <laughs> hey, nothing so wrong does, with that. Yes, so it does take quite a while, but it's not like dripping for a okay. long time. So it's not really that bad. It is a little frustrating, but it's not that bad. Okay. Well, that's pretty interesting. I'm, I'm trying to think of some of the other questions that I know a lot of people have been asking. Is there anything you want to tell us in terms of your journey? Any obstacles that you've come across? Like, any, what are the advantages, I should say, of having your hair this long? Well... First of all, a lot of people always want to know if I'm ever going to cut my hair. A lot of people right. started suggesting, well, maybe you should donate it. Right. I am sorry. I'm all for the charities, but not my hair, not my locks. It's not going anywhere. Um, in terms of advantages, it works really well for me. Like, I do a lot of driving. Okay. So rather than use a cushion, I just pack the hair, <laughs> you know, in the back. Okay. And it really does work with taking the pressure off my spine. And I have seen the way she carries her hair. And I'm going to let you, um, you tell the audience exactly how you carry your hair because I've seen that firsthand. And that's very interesting because, again, everybody feels like it's very heavy. And I wish we had a picture of it. But how do you carry your hair? Well, 
first of all, the hair is not really heavy. Okay. I mean, it's heavy in terms, I guess, in numbers. When it's dry, it's four and a half pounds. When it's wet, it's anywhere between 12 to 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. But I've learned to get creative with it through the years. Um, so what I do is like African women wrap their babies right. in a sack around their waist. I just drop my locks in the sack and tie it around my waist. It takes pressure off of anything and I can just run around and get my errands run without a problem. Right. So it's, it's really easy. It's, it's not as hard as it looks. It really is. And I have seen firsthand. Now, another question is when you're taking a shower because a lot of people have, you'll be surprised how many people have asked me questions. Like I'm the one wearing the locks. <laughs> so when you're taking a shower, what do you you do with your hair? I tie my hair up in a bun, okay. like a huge turban bun. Uh -huh. So twice a day, at least for 20, 30 minutes, my hair is wrapped up in a bun. And that's how I'm able to take a shower. I, I can't do it otherwise because if it's around my waist, it's going to get soaked. And the only time I want it to get wet is when it's being washed. Okay. So. Now, another thing, um, what about spiritual? Are there any spiritual connections in terms of your hair while you've kept it for this long without cutting it? Is there any connection along that line? When I first started my log journey, yes, it was uh, a combination of the transition from the chemicals and also that spiritual awakening that I found with myself that bring me in one accord with God in terms of my understanding. So for that reason, I, I sort of held on to it. We, we kind of built a bond. And that's why I couldn't imagine cutting my locks because it's, it's like another person with me. It's a part of me. It's kind of like a twin, actually, right, if you want right. to look at it that way. Yeah. But um, I, I just couldn't bring myself to cut it because in, in everything, every which way you look at it with me, yes, it is spiritual too, very much so. Okay. So would you consider yourself a Rastafarian? I don't consider myself a Rastafarian. Okay. I'm actually, I practice Hinduism. I touch base on Yoruba and also Kabbalah. I consider myself a child of the universe. However, when I did start my journey, Rastafarians are the, one of the main people also besides my other spiritual awakening that really gave me the strength and the encouragement to grow locks because I always had respect and admiration for them. So that, that really helped in the transition, but I'm not a Rastafarian. Okay. Now, as far as sleeping at night, how does that work? Because I've heard people post on my page, you know, that sometimes with the length, when they turn, I mean, and I'm in Hartford, so I've had, we've got a lot of sisters there that have very, very long locks. I mean, my sister, her locks are down to the ground, and they've said sleeping at night, sometimes it gets wrapped around. So how do you sleep, you know, lay your hair so that you don't encounter any of those problems? Before my locks got to this length, yes, you do go through that stage where if you don't tie it up, mm -hmm. you can get tangled in it. Mm -hmm. I have found the difference with, with the length is that I can lay it on the side of me. Okay. And no matter which way I turn, and mind you, I got a king size bed, I just roll everywhere. So you don't, don't twist and turn like I do. No. <laughs> really, I don't get tangled at all. And if it's, if it's a time where I feel like I don't want to lay it okay. next to me, I just put it in a pillow sack and okay. it's like an extra pillow. And really, I can turn with that, and it's like so much, okay. I don't get tangled either. Ah, interesting, <laughs> interesting. Is there anything that you want to share with the public in terms of things that people have asked you along the way? Well, one of the things people, questions people always ask me is, is it real? Is it all you hear? Can people here actually grow that fast? Uh, before you answer that question, this is my second time styling Asha Mandela's here, and I can tell you I had two other people helping me. It's all hers. It really is. <laughs> I have the proof. I did it. <laughs> well, that's really good, Maria. Thank you. Um, I don't know. I just sometimes I get emotional with my hair because um, I understand that, that people don't really know for sure if your hair can right. really grow that long. So yeah, they ask me, is it really yours? Yeah. Is it extensions? I cope with that. Um, I like the idea that I was actually able to hold on to my hair because for 13 years out of the 21 year journey, mm -hmm. I've had a lot of medical problems okay. that just wasn't gonna work if I didn't get creative in trying to um, find ways to not just mend where it's gonna break or more so to like shorten it so that I can manage it. Mm -hmm. And that alone in itself was like, besides being creative, was really hard work. Right, right. But I'm so, I'm proud of myself for being inspired within myself right. to get that done mm -hmm. and also for other people. But it's, it's been tough, but wonderful in, in my way that I've enjoyed it.
How do you handle negative response? Because again, I have had you posted on my page, uh, you know, several pit, um, pictures. And when people respond negatively, how does that make you feel? When I first started getting the negative um, responses, I'm a little bit sensitive. And I, I just thought it was like, maybe it's just me, but it's no, not really me. These things happen. Right. So in the beginning, I was not happy about it. I think I found myself crying and wondering, well, maybe people are really thinking bad things. And um, in talking to other people about it, I understand that it's not me. There's always going to be someone there that's going to criticize or find fault. So I've been able to come to terms with that. And now I don't... I let it work for me as in terms of constructive criticism, even if it's negative. Right, and right. it makes me want to continue my journey and even be stronger. Well, you know, the, the best revenge <laughs> is to just conquer evil with good. Yeah. And let me tell you, it, it really has been a pleasure working with you. Again, this is my second time. And I really am honored to be able to style your hair. It's been a pleasure. And I, I have just had so much fun with you, Asher. I mean, you're a very, very humble person. I will say that about you. Yes, you have the hair. You're in the Guinness Book of World Records. And you don't lord it. You're just, you're very, you're very, very humble person and I really respect you well I'm very appreciative of that because mm -hmm. like I said for the 21 years you could I refer to hairdressers or a lock stylist mm -hmm. here's the electric chair uh -oh. you could not get me in that and I just I didn't even know if I wanted to do it but right. gradually I figured since I'm a little bit more in the spotlight mm -hmm. I have to have my hair looking all groomed and not keep yeah. saying that it's homegrown and I had so many people that I could have chosen from. Everybody wanted to be my personal lock stylist, mm -hmm. but I gotta say that I'm happy that I was guided in your direction okay. because if you think I'm humble, I think you are like so cool. Mm -hmm. And I was really, when you put your hands in my hair, I sat there, I was really comfortable and I didn't worry about a thing. I mean, I would say, oh, be careful of my baby. Right, but right. really, I had confidence that you respected me. You know what I was doing. You know your work. Mm -hmm. You know how to make me comfortable in that area. Right. And I, I'm really, really pleased that I made that decision to have you be the first person. And you're very welcome. Work with it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Again, I'm Maria Thompson, and we're here with the beautiful Asher Mandela at Keston Duke Studio here in Harlem. He's the world-renowned photographer. I'd also like to thank um, Raif here in New York for providing the clothes for the photo shoot and for the interview, and also our bamboozle for the earrings and accessories, and again, for Revenge Magazine. My name is Maria Twist and Curves. You can go to my website at twistandcurves.com. I'm also on Facebook, and you can join my group. We'd love to hear your hair stories. Maria, uh, yes, darling. tell us a little about what you're doing. What I'm doing here is I'm doing what's called a flat twist, um, and I'm flat twisting her locks, um, just so that it will have a little pattern going down the back, but we're still going to be accentuating the length of her lock. So what I'm doing is not going to take away from the finished look in terms of how long showing the length of her here. This is just making it look, look a little, give her a little royalty at the back here. Yeah. Face down. What? I'm impressed with the princess. Turn around. What? I confess she got my interest. Though it's sunshine and the Without the sea, yeah, yeah. I'm in the garden pulling your way. Oh, oh, hey, hey, look, there happens. Tell them to hear me ringing out your bed. I'ma climb up to the window, then still let down the air. I come for the knock, knock. Hi, there happens. Little girl, I want you come out of your shell. I'm up for your heart that you like to ask, and I don't want to wait.